everyone, and welcome to the Beyond Acting series. Today, we're talking with set designers to learn more about their job and process. Let's meet the Zoom panel. Hi, my name is Liz, and I am a set designer. Hello, my name is Kirk, and I am a set designer. Hi, my name is Sarah Fabian, and I am a set designer. Hello, my name is Max, and I'm a set designer. That last one seemed a bit excessive, but it, it's great to have you all here today. Let's get right into it with the first question. What does it mean to you to be a set designer? Let's start with Sarah. So a set designer is in charge of creating the physical world of the play. Set designer is responsible for the scenic elements that are on stage. To bring a story to life. Set design is the chance to help create the physical world of the play, providing a space for the actors to help find their characters. What does the space that the show lives in what does that look like? It's often the first impression that the audience gets. Figure out how to make that look, colors, textures, things like that. A set designer, sort of a creator of worlds. Well, now that we know generally what a set designer does, how about a more in-depth description of what the job entails? Let's go from the time you accept the offer all the way to the time the contract is finished. What's your process like? Liz, let's start with you this time. Once I know that I'm going to design a set for a theater, they will provide me with a copy of the script and I will read it. First read the play, which is often followed by two additional reads. Start by reading the script, usually several times. I try to enjoy myself the first time. It doesn't always happen, depends on the show. I do analyze the play and figure out what's important to me. My opinion matters also. Have some of my own ideas of what I think the play is about, what I think the play should look like. I'll think about time period, color palette, and shapes. But then I break down the needs of the show. I look at the locations. Um, I think about the entrances and exits, furniture needs. Once I have all of those ideas, then it's time to talk to the director and try and bring our visions together. Kind of just tossing ideas around, talking about story, finding out what's important to them. The other thing that I like to have often is an inspirational piece. So maybe it's a painting, maybe it's music, maybe it's a picture, just something that has a an essence to it of what the play feels like to me. The next phase I move on to is research. I'm usually looking for things that are the time period, the style, quite often the playwright. I look at the characters and then I just kind of want to understand the feeling, right? What, what feelings, what evocative responses I have to the show. It's a lot of doing visual research. Um, it could be anything from going into my archive or it could be like I went for a walk yesterday and I took a really cool picture and I want to use that because it made me think of the play. I tend to start with a ground plan. I really like movement through, you know, set design is a three-dimensional space. Trying to figure out traffic patterns, the overall movement of the set, kind of as it progresses through the show. And so then once I start to figure out exactly where everything's going, then I'll start to do some initial sketches to show the director and everyone else kind of where those ideas are headed. Sketching I don't normally show directors. It's more of a personal thing for myself as I explore what the world looks like and feels like to me. In terms of communicating with directors, I like to move straight to models. Do usually some sketches, very, very simple stuff up front about what, the, what it looks like. But I spend the majority of my time 3D modeling. I work in a program called 3D Studio Max, a lot of gaming software. And I, I tend to just get, this is what it looks like, get it off to people to have that conversation to see what works, what doesn't work. We get connected into everyone. Um, and uh, essentially it's a lot of talking about the play, talking about the story. Why do we want to tell the story? What's important? Even though my job is to create the physical world, my job is ultimately to help support the story through scenery. Once I have all of that together and I've made a ground plan, I do what are called mood sketches. And so these are just quick little drawings with a little bit of paint and a little bit of color that you can send to the director. Get your drawings approved. 
do your technical drawings, which go to the shop. I tend to go into more detailed sketches, either do 3D renderings or kind of create kind of some kind of paper model, which is like the initial model, like it's a basic version. And then after that, it moves on to the final model, which is full in color, you know, making sure all the details are there. There's weeks and weeks, me tweaking it, changing it, shifting colors, um, working along that. You know, we'll be refining those decisions, picking out colors, textures, fabrics, whatever it may be, finishings. Present to the cast uh, so they can understand the world that they're kind of going to live in, uh, where the show's going to develop, where their characters are going to develop. And then I guess I spend about 100 hours generally drafting. That That's a, a sick, sick feeling sometimes, but I love it. Um, and then I send that off to the the team to build. And moving from there, I spend the next two months probably doing paint elevations, uh, things, what it looks like, what I want to paint it like, and then uh, any prop drawings that are different than find a chair. I don't draw the chairs. So once the drawings are to the shop, the shop approves them. Um then they start the build. And then it's a lot of answering questions. So it's kind of nonstop. You know, you got stage managers with questions. You got the props and the paints people. The director needs to know things kind of pop into rehearsal from time to time. One week that I go in and I do notes and anything that I wanted to build on my own or paint on my own. And then the set is finally built. Now it's time to paint it. And we're like literally installing it and doing all, in, all of the finishing features. Um, and then we're teching it. I like to attend Tech Week usually, uh, initially to make sure that the set's being used optimally, making sure that everybody understands how it works safely. As a set designer, you're sitting in the audience. If you have moving parts, if there's multiple sets and things have to move on stage and things have to move off stage, you're watching to make sure that all of that goes as according to plan and to problem solve. Putting it all together, opening night, and I fly out the next morning. And then it's hands off. No changes should occur after opening night because that should be the same show every time. You get through tech rehearsal and the show opens and then you drink champagne sometimes? Sometimes. I'd say every time? <laughs> anyway, with the process in mind, on to question number two. What is the time frame of commitment like for a set designer? Let's start with Kirk this time. You know, quite often the, the idea is like, hey, we want you to design next season's probably a year out. But the idea of the offer letter, those people are always late to begin with, but the offer comes about six to nine months before opening. So the time frame is, again, it's really malleable. You'll find the longer you work in this business, the more different, uh, different theaters work timeline it varies depending on the show and the situation <laughs> what i've encountered for set designs the offer comes usually about a year year and a half out rehearsals are about eight weeks so their production calendar is usually 16 so i'll meet with them 16 weeks before the show opens with all of my drawings the shortest amount of time i've had from offer to opening was probably three months that might be like a really small storefront. So you have a limited budget. There's just not a lot of time. Once I've agreed to do the show, I'll step out and talk to the director. That kind of happens a couple weeks later. I start the process generally somewhere around six months before. Uh, directors tend to want to speak to set designers first. That's the one thing that they're like, I know I have to walk on something. Yeah, we're wearing clothes, but I know I gotta walk. So I wanna know what that looks like. The longest is a year and a half. The ones that are like a year, year and a half are much larger theaters um, and or bigger productions like an opera. And we'll meet with the group, I'll share those. Then we have man, usually another three to four weeks to start solidifying the ground plan, making sure everything's exactly where it needs to be. Probably about three months, go back and forth with different meetings, getting everyone together, uh, especially when you're around the country, not always easy. Just seeing what everyone needs. I'll do final presentations about nine weeks before the show opens. And then after that, generally a four to six week build process where everything's put together and assembled before loaded week, which is usually about a week or two before uh, tech. They will have rehearsals up until a week before the show opens and then they go into the space. Get everything loaded in, set up and organized exactly the way you want it. And then once it's set, you begin tech rehearsals and then sometimes uh, previews depending on the company. And that's where you kind of bring an audience in for the first time, introducing that last element of the audience to the show. But I'm on site for about 10 days, two weeks. And 
that usually wraps it up and I see the opening. But generally by that point, you've moved on to your next design. And then I read the notes for the next three months while it's running <laughs> and smile and hope that everyone that's there does the little fixes. But I'm usually out of the picture um, after opening night. Well, as we wrap up and wind down, I want to get any final thoughts on being a set designer. Any last minute takeaways or things we didn't get to cover? Your closing statements, please. I guess that the thing about being a set designer first and foremost that that is the difficult thing is since you are usually the first to the table with the director is making sure that you don't move too far too fast right with the rest of your design team um the one thing that i always got my hands slapped by costume designers was when i put my cute little figure into the model or into a rendering and they're like why did you dress them I'm like, well, it's kind of gross to have naked people running around my, my model, but I have to show scale. And so I think it's really about balancing the relationship that you're going to have with the individual. Some want you to choose colors. Some want you to do that so that they can react. It, it's understanding the, the desire of the rest of the team, I think, that really want to come in and how much they want. So I guess it's really about pacing yourself with the people around you to, to make it really cool. Set design is the chance to take the real world and to morph it physically into a new place, whether you change the scale or change the color, or change the size or reinvent everything about it. It's just reshaping the world for, for the best way to tell the story. And, and your imagination is the only thing that can limit you in that regard. Creating a set is about more than just like figuring out what flats and platforms there are. It's about, it's about building a playground for the actors to find their characters in. And really it's about creating a home for those characters to live in. It's, it's being an architect for imaginary people. One thing that I think is important is to not lose sight of why theater is important and the impact it can have, um, not only on like communities, but for individual people. Um, you know, I feel like if I didn't, for whatever reason, didn't get to go see The Lion King, maybe I wouldn't have ended up where I am. And to be honest, like when I originally started out on my path, I felt like I needed to do something that was going to make money, which is funny. Um, and so I, when I started college, I actually was a biochemistry uh, pre-med student. Um, and it was about a couple weeks into it when I was thinking about my life. This is not exciting. I don't feel passionate about this. And so, um, you know, I think when I made the decision to call home, so I'm not gonna be a doctor, I'm gonna do theater. It was terrifying, um, but my parents were really supportive. Um, and I'm glad that I made that choice. Even if you, you know, if you don't want to do theater as a career, there's so many wonderful things you learn from it that can help you in other professions. I have often stood backstage or um, in other places that the public, that the audience never sees and have felt great privilege. I don't know, like just like, I go, I can stand there and be like, I am watching these people paint this drop at, you know, and it's in the afternoon and I know this drop is going to be going into the theater in two weeks and nobody knows, nobody else is seeing all these people stand here with these bamboo canes and using the, the techniques, you know, there's like all these secrets that I get to know. It's a privilege. And I just remember standing backstage and looking between the legs and watching actresses in their dance costumes leisurely sort of slouch and talk as they're leaning on the props box, you know, and chatting and the lights are going and it's on the cinder block of the back wall. And, that is a perspective that not everybody gets. And it's, it just feels special. It's special. Amazing. That's perfect. Well, that's about it. I want to thank you all for being here today and for taking the time to answer our questions in such detail. I want to thank you all for watching. Till next time, thanks, y'all.